Anybody's curious, where did we get the name shampoo? Shampoo comes from India. In a little history story, shampooya, to massage or manipulate. British guy thought that name was really cool because, you know, massaging the hair was kind of a cool thing. Brought it and it gets stuck because otherwise we would say, go get the bottle of detergent. Well, that doesn't sound cool. Nobody likes the term. It doesn't sell well. Shampooing sounds great. So in case anyone's curious on, let's see, that would be the next uh, bit of information when you're on Jeopardy. So, you know, that's like, Alex, what's the name of a cool shampoo and how did he get his name? And, you know, you go, the answer is, uh, you know, from the Indian word shampoo. One of the things that's kind of fun about shampooing is, is all this is supposed to do is clean. But for some reason, there's an emotional attachment over brands. And companies knock themselves out to build and make a brand recognizable product. And everybody's fighting over that recognition on why their shampoo is better. Question. What's the difference between the body soap, liquid, and shampoo? Absolutely nothing. We sell both in the same way, just label them different. So you can wash the shampoo? Yes, you can. And we sell shampoo and body wash and shampoo and body wash. A number of customers are basically doing that. The uh, Dial product and the Gillette product, all we do is change the strength of the product to make it do whatever we want. And adding the percentages is all that we do to make the products kind of different. It's kind of like going to a restaurant and we cook. To me, a hamburger is a hamburger because it's got meat, lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, and all we buns, sesame, maybe not sesame, I don't know. So when I look at a hamburger, but I know that they taste different. I can taste the difference between a McDonald's, a Burger King, a McDonald's, Carl's, an Island's Burger, a Fuddruckers, Johnny Rocket Burger or whatever, they all taste differently. But when you disassemble them in parts, they're the same things that I would say, or these are my chemicals that I work with. And so can somebody come into my office and say, I want to have a shampoo that's exactly like Pureology. Can I do that? Oh, absolutely. Or somebody will come in, I want one that copies Redken. Can I do it? Absolutely. Can I do Paul Mitchell? No problem. If that's what you want. But that determines that that's kind of like, well, what hamburger do you like to taste to you? If you, if you poll the people in the room, everybody will have a different opinion on what shampoo they like, what car they like, what brand of shoes they like. And that's why the world turns and there's no one perfect shampoo that everybody likes. The reason is, is everybody's tastes are different, opinions are different, body chemistry is different. Where you may have oily skin, there's a dry skin. My hair is frizzy, my hair is uh, fine, my hair is coarse. Everybody has a physiological difference. And you have to be very careful on what those differences are because everybody will buy a product to fit what they believe makes them feel good. And that's why we contract out and do 27 different brands of shampoo companies. It just is how the market is out there and how those salesmen promote their product. And when they go into the salons or do their demos, they tell you why theirs is the greatest thing in the world. And it may be for some people, but not everybody in here will like it. But in the case of chemistry, we put the product together just like cooking and we get a finished product and we hope and pray the salesman can sell you that product. And if they can, lucky us, we made a sale. If not, go find another customer. It's like, it's like buying houses, you know. This may not be your floor plan. Uh, maybe your price range, but not your floor plan. Funniest things I've ever heard are, are items that people come out with. Well, your hair is going to be healthier. Hair is dead. It's like fingernails. You don't cut it. It never goes out. It's just dead. You're trying to get the stuff off of it so it can be clean, so you can do a service. Or you want it clean so you don't have dandruff. Or you want it clean so you don't have skin problems, eczema, severia. But now we've made it, you know, more of an application of beauty. So we get crazy with that. The funniest one I think I've ever heard that I never will get through my head is a company that you've probably heard, and I hate, I hate to say it, but that they come out with, our shampoo has nanotechnology. It's Pureology. I've been around a long time. And I've watched a lot of Star Trek, and I know Dr. Crusher has made a lot of nanites in the 24th century. I have no idea how somebody has made a little nanite that goes into a shampoo that's going to eat the little dirt particles out of your hair, crunch, 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 and then you wash them off. How that one got sold, I don't know. But people have gone off the deep end, and, and some people have gone off the deep end in the worst way. Eric Stossel, 2020, did a segment with the Long Beach Hair Show. Talked to the guy from Joico, nice fellow, know the guy. Caught him off guard. He said to him, well, your product has human hair, keratin, protein. Where do you get the human hair, keratin, protein from? 
because he was going on and on about how human hair carotene protein had to be better than vegetable protein because that was like putting carrots on your head. This was, you know, better than anything else. Well, the reality is human hair keratin protein comes from bovine. But he didn't know what to say on the spot, camera's rolling, and he said, <laughs> well, get it from third world countries. <laughs> I, you know, I know Steve Stefano. He grew up in Hacienda Heights where I grew up as a kid. He was a hairdresser, had 25, 26 salons before he wanted to get into the hair business. I couldn't believe he would say that. Because immediately... Where does it come from? Uh, bovine, steers, animals. It comes from skins. You know, and nothing on animals are wasted. And so you take the skin and you render it into its protein molecule. And the reason it was close to human hair keratin was because it's a very close monocle to if you took the skin of people off, dissected it, and made a protein out of it, the molecule is very similar. But it's not from humans. It just became a bizarre situation for marketing. And so they, because it was similar and it looked like a uh, human molecule, they call it human hair keratin. Had nothing to do with the truth. Made by the Crota chemical company, by the way. And I buy from Crota, nice people. But all that being said was, it's marketing and the FDA gives it a word called cosmetic puffering. If it doesn't hurt you ladies and it's just BS, who's going to argue with ladies because we're married to you, Mother's Day comes and you're, you're the mother of our children, so we don't want to upset you. <laughs> You know, makes you beautiful and beautiful cells. So that's where it came from. But yeah, immediately uh, Chinese were upset, thinking, are they a world, third world country? The blacks were incensed that they were cutting the heads of Africans somewhere in Africa. The Hispanics were upset that, you know, they're doing the same thing, shaving people's heads down in Mexico. And everybody went nuts. And I don't even know where Joico is today. The Steve Stefano sold the company to uh, Shiseido. Shortly thereafter, I guess, uh, for some reason, uh, I moved from its big plant that was in off of Valley Boulevard in City of Industry. I don't, I don't know. I don't even. I don't know if I see even Joyco, even if it's being marketed. So I don't know what happened to that brand. No, I still see it. Do you still see it? Yeah, I've used it before. So you know, you don't hear that human hair carrot. Now you hear keratin protein, which is animal protein, but they drop the human hair part off the advertisements. Wasn't there a law like? years ago, like false advertisement, is that, is that law still in There is false advertising, that's correct. But there's also a rule of cosmetic puffering where if it does no harm, it isn't an advertisement. How is it to say to any lady, this shampoo will make you look beautiful? And she's, and she's just the lady. I mean, she's not going to be Miss Kardashian tomorrow by using shampoo. Where's the lie? So if it says it does something then it, uh, it does that it has to do that thing? Like say if it says anti-frizz or... Sure, what? and there's no scientific term for frizz. There is no scientific term for frizz in science. Every hairdresser knows it when they see it because everybody sees frizz and you see frizz, she sees frizz, he sees frizz, they see frizz and to you it's frizzy, most not so frizzy, kind of frizzy, super frizzy, mega frizzy, there's a degree of frizz and it's subjective. <laughs> Who knows what frizz is? There is no scientific quantified book that opens it up and goes, these 42 pictures are from zero frizz to mega frizz. We make a product and then basically the person will say all the things that we love to say, made in the USA. Everybody wants to hear that. No animal testing. We have an animal test of a product since 1944, 5 or 6. Stopped animal testing. It's expensive. Do you know if we did an animal test today, you're looking at about $400,000. Trust me, my client ain't going to pop for four hundred grand like you guys who want to come into my shop and make a shampoo. You ain't got four hundred grand. If you did, you wouldn't be looking for a shampoo. You'd be living off your money. That's what it costs for an animal test today. Nobody animal tests. Haven't done it in I don't know how long. Makes for good TV and movies because, you know, you got all these neat people on NCIS who are worried about something or it has to do with animals. Nobody's animal tested. We, first of all, we can't afford it, and there's no reason to. The, the company I worked for was kind of fun. When the old man made a product, he tried it out on us. I mean, hey, bring in the kids, take this home and shampoo with it. If your hair didn't fall out and you look pretty the next day and you didn't, didn't die, must work. Today, I did the same thing. Um, we made a shampoo, I take it home and tried it on my kids. It worked. I mean, and, and we make dog shampoo. You think I'm going to try it on my dog, Crypto? Oh, heck no, I tried it on my son first. He never had fleas, so it must have worked. I don't know, so we can say, good flea protection. Brian, you have fleas? Nope. That's the advertising. 
It's called cosmetic puffering. The FDA actually gave it a name. 